One of the most powerful ways we're going to end up using moles is in stoichiometry problems. And stoichiometry problems or the stoichiometry process can be applied in a lot of different ways. So let's spend a little bit of time looking at a few of those uh, applications and most importantly, looking at the process. Whenever we're doing a stoichiometry problem, we've got a four step process. Step one, write a balanced chemical equation. In order to do that, you need balanced chemical formulas. So there are a few layers here, but that's really the key to the stoichiometry problem. Step number two, find moles of whatever you can. I said moles were gonna be important here. So find moles of whatever we have enough information to find moles of. Then in step three, this is really the heart. Use the relationships between reactants and products in, those balanced chem in that balanced chemical equation to convert moles of what you know, the moles found in step two, into moles of whatever you're looking for. Uh, I usually refer to those as moles of interest. And then in step four, convert moles of interest into whatever quantity of interest we want to find out. Uh, at this point in the class, uh, we're probably going to be using grams and just got all these problems. So let's look at a few applications and work through a couple quick problems. One type of problem is a theoretical yield. How much material can I make if everything goes perfectly? So if you completely react 2.934 grams of hydrogen with excess oxygen, how many grams of water can be produced? What's the theoretical yield of water? Step one, write a balanced chemical equation. We've seen this one before. Um, two hydrogen gas plus an oxygen gas give us two water molecules. Step two, find the moles of whatever you can. In this case, I only know how much hydrogen I'm using. So divide grams of hydrogen by grams per mole of hydrogen and we get moles. Um, make sure your units cross out and cancel appropriately so that you've got it set up right. I'm gonna carry a ridiculous number of sig figs uh, for now because we're only gonna round once at the end of the problem. Um, step three, use the relationships in the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of known to moles of interest. I'm just going to keep adding to this. Um, so these first two terms are just what we had up here. Now we've got to use our mole to mole ratio of water to hydrogen to give us a result. And again, make sure your units are canceling correctly so that all these fractions are in the right order and not flipped over. That gives us moles of water. Convert moles of interest to quantity of interest. Again, grams in our case. So these first three terms are the ones that we had up here. And now I've got the formula mass of, or the molar mass of water. 18.015 grams per mole. Just added up off the periodic table. And we get a theoretical yield of 22 point, or 26.22 grams of water. Again, use the units to make sure you're setting these up in the correct direction, in the correct order. So that's theoretical yield. That's an important thing for us to know. What else can we do with stoichiometry problems? Well, a, a little addition to a theoretical yield problem is a percent yield problem. So if you completely react that many grams of hydrogen with excess oxygen, you recover 11.48 grams of water. What is your percent yield? Now, a percent yield you all know how to do that. You know how to do percents. You do them on your exam scores, your quiz scores all the time. This is no different. We've got a theoretical yield, which we need to find using uh, our four steps of geometry process. This whole thing is just same as the last slide, just working through all the steps. So 26.22 grams is the theoretical yield if we use up all this 2.934 grams of hydrogen. The actual yield is how much we actually recover. So if we take the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100, you get the percent yield. This is 43.78% yield. Um, one important word here is excess oxygen. So the way I'm stating this problem, this is how much hydrogen I'm using, and I'm using as much oxygen as I want. I've got just loads and loads and loads of oxygen so it's in excess it is not going to limit how much product i can make uh oh there are all my cross outs what about reaction planning that seems like it's pretty important uh how many grams of oxygen gas do you 
do, you need to completely react with 2.934 grams of hydrogen gas to form gaseous water. It's another stoichiometry problem. So step one, balance the equation. Got it. Step two, find moles of whatever you can. The only thing we've got information about here is hydrogen gas. Um, so find out moles of hydrogen gas. This should look familiar. The numbers are the same as they've been. Uh, use the relationship in the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of known to moles of interest. Again, same two terms. And now I want to know moles of oxygen compared to moles of hydrogen. So that's a one to two ratio. I can make that many moles of hydrogen and convert moles of interest to quantity of interest. Let's get out to grams of hydrogen. We get 23.28 grams of hydrogen. So that's a reaction planning type of uh, stoichiometry problem. The last type of stoichiometry problem that we're going to talk about right now um, is related to that previous one. Because what if this brings us to a limiting and excess reactant type of problem. So how many grams of H2O gas can be produced by reacting that much hydrogen with that much oxygen? Now this might look like your conservation of mass problems, but this one's a little different because are these the right amounts of both of these to perfectly react with each other? And hint, they're usually not. So stoichiometry problem, same four steps. Let's get going, write a balanced chemical equation. There we go. Step two, find moles of whatever you can. In this case, we can find moles of both hydrogen and oxygen. So let's sort of do two stoichiometry problems simultaneously. So there's my moles of hydrogen, there's my moles of oxygen. Next, step three, use the relationships in the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of known to moles of interest. So again, same kind of thing. And now we get to a point where if I use all of the hydrogen, I can make 1.4 moles of water. If I use all the oxygen, I can only make 0.42 moles of water. So this is telling me that my oxygen is the limiting reactant in this case. So once I make 0.42 moles of water, I run out of oxygen. So it doesn't matter how much hydrogen I've got at that point, I can't make this much. So oxygen is my limiting reactant. Hydrogen is my excess reactant in this particular problem. Which means that step four, I only need to use the limiting reactant to figure out how many grams of water I can make. So that's another uh, application of this stoichiometry process. So once again, here are our four steps. Get these steps locked in. We're going to use them a lot. Step one, write a balanced chemical equation. Step two, find moles of whatever you can find moles of. Step three, use the relationships in the balanced chemical equation to convert moles of known to moles of interest. And finally, step four, convert moles of interest to whatever quantity you're looking at uh, in the problem. And again, at this point, it's most uh, often going to be grams. With a little practice, these become a, quite a bit easier to approach. So it's a matter of just looking at a lot of problems, seeing how those four steps work in a variety of problems, and turning the crank and just doing, uh, doing more and more examples so that you become comfortable with it. Practice a lot, uh, good luck, and I will see you next time.